Well, all right, we just got the truck hooked up here to the bell wagon. Rolling along through the field, and I went ahead and loaded up the rest of the trailer. And we're now ready to take it down to sell it. Uh, wasn't able to get anybody to help me. The uh, wife is busy. Uh, nobody down at the co-op is available. So I'm having to do this all by myself today. But we'll get it done. I uh, got a couple bells here that fell off of the, the baler. Wouldn't fit on the trailer. So we're going to throw them in the truck. And we'll take them down with us as well. So if you remember the last time. Well, just a little while ago, actually. I was over at the horse barn for the Elk Mountain Ranch. And we loaded up about 50 bales into his barn. I can't get in the door there. Did I leave? Oh, man. It's locked. How did I lock the door? Uh oh. Let me go see if I can find a key somewhere. It doesn't look locked. That handle is jammed. I can't get in the truck. All right, let me figure something out here. There we go. Got in the truck. The door handle was just sticking there. I couldn't get it opened. Finally got in. So we're going to head on down to the... We Buy Hay location over there at Cliff's Feed Store. And get this wagon load of hay. Alfalfa hay. Sold. So I'm sitting at about $24,000. Do have the $78,000 debt to pay by the end of today. So I'm not sure what... We're going to get for this load, but we're going to head on over and find out. That's not good. A pretty good amount for the trailer load compared to the hay. I don't think this is going to do it. Only $10,000. Had a long ways to go to make up the difference. Back down to the hay field. We'll get the rest of it built up and I'll make another trip down and get it sold. All right, just got my wife on the road there with the gooseneck trailer. She's going to take the truck back down to the house. I picked her up on the way back up here to the ranch. And we got the rest of it built up and uh, picked up the rest of the hay. As you can see, not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. Uh, this, this little venture here. Although, I'm very kind of the fellow there that owns the ranch to give me basically free hay. It is not going to make up the difference on what I owe. So I do have corn in the silo. And I really hate to sell that, but I'm, it's looking like I don't have much of a choice. So, headed back down to the farm. We're going to swing by cliffs, go ahead and sell the rest of this alfalfa hay here and then uh, go over to the house and uh, see what's available maybe cliff has a contract available for us maybe i could do a little bit of side work there and uh, pick up some more cash but if not may have to hook up the truck to the trailer and uh, start hauling a little bit of corn and see where we can get with that i'm not even sure we have enough corn in the silo to 
to uh, make up the difference. So back to the house and we'll see where we're at and see what I'm going to end up doing. All right, we're back over here at the farm and I was actually uh, just brought the tractor down here. I was going to pick up the tether and take it back down and load it up on the trailer. I was going to liquidate some inventory from the farm. Got to looking at the current prices and I did a little bit of figuring some of that fuzzy math and selling all of my corn still would not get me enough money to pay off that debt. So it's right by the alfalfa field here and I happen to notice this stuff has actually grown rather quickly. Now it doesn't appear to be full grown but I'm wondering can I get a cutting off of this? I don't know. So I think what I want to do is head back over to the shed. I want to leave the tether there. I may end up needing it. Now I know I won't get much yield off of this. But it is something there. Maybe I can get a few more thousand dollars. I mean every little bit helps at this point. Every little bit helps. It is uh, the 1st of November. So I don't expect it to grow very much more. So maybe we can just uh, nip the tops of it off there. And uh, see if we can't get it to dry out really quick. And get it built up and take it across over and see if Cliff will buy it up from us. I don't know. I don't know if I can cut it that low. We'll uh, hook up to the uh, mower here. You see I have the trailer back here. I actually had the skid steer pulled out of the shed was going to hook up to some of the implements I'm not using and uh, get those sold as well so we still may end up having to do that but we'll go ahead and try this out first and see if it won't help uh, cover the gap here let's see if I can get this out of here I think that we can swing this out and then in Look at that. Professional driver right there. <laughs> Not really. And so I do want to uh, thank some of you guys who commented on one of my earlier videos talking about where to run the tractor while I'm mowing the grass. So that was very helpful. So I do appreciate that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and run around here in the field. Let's see if we can get this to cut anything. Lower down, turn it on, cross my fingers. It's too short for it to cut anything. Oh, man. I thought... Thought I was onto something there. Oh well, let me go put this back in the barn, and I'll go grab the tether, and I get that on the trailer, and then we'll uh, load up a few more things and see what else we can sell. I do have some maters here. We can get rid of a couple pallets. Oh, also to note, I did get some weeds pulled out of the garden, so that looks much better. And if you notice. We have swapped over to grow in lettuce. And now that it's cooling down, the tomatoes are not going to grow nearly as good. So we've swapped over to lettuce here in the cooler months. And we'll get uh, get a good crop of that, hopefully. Now, the question is, can I back this thing into barn? Bar Ooh, look, look at that. Look at this, guys. It is almost like I know what I'm doing. Almost. How am I going to get out of this debt? Why do I keep finding myself in these scenarios? That's what I need to figure out. How in the world do I keep getting 
in these situations. I mean, it's almost like it's self-inflicted. <laughs> but we'll work through it. We'll work through it. Somehow, we'll get through this situation. All right. Down here, I grab the tether and get it on the trailer. And then we'll load up a few of the uh, skid steer implements. truck that should ride up there let's go ahead and hop in the skid steer here disconnect that bucket and I do have a bell spear in here and I don't remember why I bought it to be honest with you oh I know why I bought it is those straw bells that was down there by the silo but I don't have a baler that can uh, use this right now so I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of it if I need it later on we'll just have to buy it again that won't bring very much money but at this point dollars count and we do have the grapple down here I don't anticipate doing any logging work here in Elk Mountain, so let's go ahead and get rid of that. Now we'll hang on to the uh, the cutter there that for the front. That was actually really nice to uh, get rid of some of these bushes around the farm. We'll hang on to that. leave enough room on here for the pallets so we'll get these kind of nestled into each other other there all right now we'll run around here and grab the pallet forks before we do that let me just double check I have the mower and a bucket I'll keep the bucket we may end up having to do a little bit more dirt work around here and we do have the cedar in here and the sprayer so unless we get rid of some of our main items there that looks like about it and we'll pull on up here and get the uh, pallet porch hooked up I guess the other option we could end up selling the baler and the trailer I would hate to do that uh, we also got those rakes down there Although they won't bring very much either. Uh, we won't have any grass work to do until next, well, ne close to next summer. So we have uh, quite a few months to potentially find some money and uh, replace that equipment. Ah, what to do, what to do. Well, what I'm going to do is get these uh, two pallets of tomatoes loaded up here with the skid steer. And then we'll take those down to the farmer's market. 
and then all of this equipment will take down to the dealership and see what we can end up getting for it I don't remember how much exactly that rake or that tether was uh, that may end up bringing a decent amount but I do remember that was a used find so I don't think it's gonna bring a whole lot Yes, I could always sell the skid steer as well. Of course, then I would have trouble loading the pallets from our greenhouse here. Big dilemma. Oop, oop. Went down a little bit too far there. There we go. Smooth as butter. All right. So now we got the pallets loaded up. We have the few items that we're going to sell. Hop in the old Ford here and head on into town. I was really, uh, really excited about the potential of getting that early cutting of alfalfa, but that didn't work out. So just not quite it tall enough for the uh, cutter to get a hold of it and uh, do any good. So that was unfortunate. That could actually been a really good thing all right I just usually cut across this parking lot here they don't seem to mind we'll get these tomatoes unloaded here uh, only seven hundred and forty three dollars so not a whole lot there but it is uh seven hundred and forty three dollars closer well I'm hungry I can't be affording any food right now. Let's just go ahead and ease through that intersection there. And we'll pull over here and run in and see what the shop can do on these items. Well, they got it unloaded and I made $7,300. Not a whole lot. But that is a good start. So let me head on back down to the house and we'll get set up here. Uh, Cliff actually called me to check back in and uh, I had to ask him about some contracts. He said there is a contract and I'm not going to like it. Uh, it is harvesting sugar beets and it would require many, many trips down to the, to the uh, cell location due to the uh, amount of volume we would get off of it. So I didn't want to uh, take that on. It paid pretty good, but I didn't have time today to get it done. And I checked with the co-op. They don't have anybody available to help either. So that is a no-go. So we're going to head back down here. I think we're just going to go ahead and hook up to the uh, trailer and take the uh, start taking corn off. All right, we got our first load in the trailer here, and we're gonna head on down and take it. Uh, this trailer doesn't hold a ton, so we're gonna take uh, quite a few trips down to the train station. Actually, that is the best price I can find around right now. So we're gonna throw it on the train and send it over to Cheyenne, and uh, someone over there will uh, buy it from us. $313 for a thousand liters right now is the going price. 
so it is actually at the bottom of the chart we are selling it at the very worst time possible uh, I am up to about forty four thousand dollars though so that is a little better than we were sitting a little bit earlier today so we'll see what we can get out of this I did a little bit more of that fuzzy math and I think we're going to just squeak out after we sell all of the corn. It is going to be very, very close. Very close. But the problem with all of this is I will have nothing in the silo and then no cash in the bank. I am going to be flat broke again. Oh boy. Nope, well, let's get this unloaded here. And we'll keep making some loads. Alright. Back to the silo. Well, we're back here at the silo. Getting the last little bit that looks like it's done there all 119,000 liters of corn out of the silo so we've made several trips over to the uh, train station uh, this trailer doesn't hold a whole lot so we've had to make quite a few trips but this will be it we'll get over there and we'll see about getting the train brought in load up the train and then we will send it off to Cheyenne all that beautiful green equipment sitting there at the dealership We are almost back up here to the train station. We'll get this load dumped out. That did not take very long. I'll go ahead and pull out of here just in case another truck comes along and they need to get in here. We'll just pull over here out of the way. All right, let's see about calling the train. Oh, shoot, there it goes. Let's get this train here. Ooh, looks like we caught it just in time. It should back up here for us. There we go. Talk about good timing. All right, let's load up some corn. All right, so we got the corn loading up here in the uh, train. See it in the car back there. All 119,200 and some change liters. Hopefully it all fits in that car. Oh, it may, may not. It's all empty. Good deal. Well, let's take a little train ride.
Well, just got back from the uh, train ride there and managed to sell the corn over in Cheyenne. Have good news and bad news. The good news is I'm up to about $81,000. So I do have enough to cover the $78,000 debt that I need to pay. Bad news is I am out of goods, low on equipment, and I'm about to be low on cash. So I want to run up here and go ahead and uh, swing by the lawyer's office and cut them a check. And I don't know what I'm going to do after that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please be sure to click that thumbs up button to get the video a like. If you're new to the channel or have not yet subscribed, go ahead and consider subscribing today. I'd appreciate that. Thank you all for watching. As always, I hope you have a blessed day.